You're listening to Black Country Radio. Well, Leon, thank you very much for your time, as always. And I'd I'd better explain to the dear listeners, when I first joined the previous incarnation of this station, one of the first voices I used to ring up um, about what was happening on the local football scene down at Tiverdale was your good self. You realise we've we've been talking to each other across the phones for nearly a decade now. Oh, is that all? (laughs) I thought it was longer than that. It feels longer than that, doesn't it? It does, but, it does feel longer than that. But all this but it's time... Been it's been good. It's been good. I mean, we've had some great times covering Tiverdale and, yeah, and not yeah. so good, but a bit super times. Um, but yeah. this is what I'm saying about Tiverdale. You, just before we go on to the recent uh, good news, well, I think it's very good news. Um, how long have you been associated with Tiverdale then, please, Leon? Um, 1999. Wow. Uh, um, that was... Uh, that was when I first came onto the committee. I came onto the committee just before the Millennium parties. I've always been a member of the Tivadale Football Club because, as anybody will know, is that I'm local born and this is where I live as well. I was born in Tivadale and raised in Tivadale and I've lived in Tivadale all my life. Oh, great. And, and what the earlier parts of it, what sort of footy did you get involved in as a no, younger man? Oh, as a younger man, I used to play, oh, crikey, I'd say it was our level six, seven, I should think so. Yeah. Um, you know, the um, Staffs Counties League and things like that. Right. Uh, but in those days, obviously, there, there wasn't so many levels in yeah. those days. You know, if you won the West Midland League, it was straight into the, it was straight into the Southern League. Oh, I've you know, got you. You, didn't have the, you didn't have the MFL divisions one two three and how many and whatever so uh yeah in those days it i mean the standard of football right the non-league level was well i think it's higher than it is now but um right. it's just one of those so so you the, you finished playing you got involved in tividale as you say your local club onto the committee and yeah. and that time as i think we've intimated already um, I know smashing nights down at the beaches and promotion times and things like that and, and going so well. Um, things have been in and out the last few seasons, haven't they? Yeah, well, um, I'd say over the last, well, as long as we've been speaking, really, in the last 10 or 12 years. Yeah. I mean, when we first won the West Midland League, I think that was that was the birth of our friendship, really, with the Black, with, um, Black Country Radio. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that was, what, 2010, 2011, I yeah, think it was, when yeah. uh, Dean White House. And since then, it's been a sort of, well, it's been a rapid, it was rapid uphill, because, I mean, we was only like four seasons in the NFL, then we, then we was in the Northern Premier. Yes. After seasons in the Northern Premier, got relegated, well, we got relegated on the second season, and uh, we sort of dropped straight out. We, we spent one season in the NFL, Got relegated from there, and then we slowly worked our back. Well, brings us up to now. We got back into the MFL, and two seasons of COVID, and this is our first full season really since we've been back in the MFL. Yeah, I mean that's the story for many clubs, isn't it? This yeah, difficulty yeah, 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 yeah. after what looking forward to 2018-19, and uh, and that happened, but then 1920 yeah. just lost. And this is That's the first great. out of three seasons uh, to get a feel. And a lot of time has been lost with players that were there up at the front and, and perhaps not used now or, or been with yeah. the various clubs. What's it been like down at Tividale then during the COVID time? Are, are things well, OK? But you've been busy? Um, we, we was fairly fortunate, really, because um, due, to, due to the layout of Tividale, we was able to do a lot of outside. We was able to build up the um, outside area, yeah. so we had a lot of outside drinking when that became available. Uh, off on the pitch again, we was fortunate because we still had we still had Mr. King as our manager throughout it. Yes. Uh, the players, as you do at this level, there's a lot of loyal players who was with him, and so really. Um, don't get me wrong, it affected us like you know, we lost a lot of money like a lot of other clubs did yeah. and whatever. But, you know, I think we was more stable than quite a few other clubs around us. I must admit it was, I was, along with all the other fears and whatever and concerns with COVID, 
one of the worries was how many clubs would survive on the other side of however long COVID would last. And I've been pleasantly, very pleasantly surprised how many are still hanging in there and doing OK. So we understand they're OK after a first full yes. season back. Oh, yourselves included. You're listening to Black Country Radio. What sort of season has it been this season then? Uh, first one back after COVID. It's been, it's been a long season. Yeah. You know, when you've had sort of two stop and start seasons and you've had friendlies all through the summer and uh, a lot of clubs, we had a lot of competitions in April and May of this year, but obviously because we um, last season, well, say the, oh, getting it right now, the 2020 2021 season. Ended on Boxing Day, literally. Yeah, yeah. So, and then we started back up again at the end of the season, which was like ooh, March, April. Yeah. And there was a lot of tournaments and everything there. So we literally, so a lot of these lads have played football for twelve months now. Yeah, All right. Literally non-stop, and it has took its toll on. Well, I think it took a toll on a few clubs, um, us included, because I mean, around the turn of the year. February, March, we was up there, second, third place. Yes. But, um, you know, looking at second, third place, I should say. But uh, the as the season went on, it took its toll with uh, it players injuries or whatever. And, and, you know, at our level, no no club carries a big squad. No. And uh, we sort of faded away, really. And the players was glad for the end of the, for the break, really. They were just tired. It seems to be the feedback across many levels that that's been the case. It's it's having got out the habit of a full season, how many games normally played Correct. at the level, exactly. is then suddenly, exactly. as you say, 12, 13, 14 months, and wow, we've got to the end of it, and now relax. Mm-hmm. And, but the good thing is, with yourselves, you where you started, you're in there, safety um, in the yes. division. Now, yes. correct me if I'm wrong, you're down as general manager at the moment, is that correct? Yes, I've always been general manager, yeah. really. I mean, uh, I mean, people have tried to throw different titles at me and whatever. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've heard the president and all sorts been bandied about, right? Um, mm-hmm. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I'm just a Tividale lad and I just do as much as I can for Tividale. I'm really not really that interested in titles or whatever. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> it's, it's a case of... If the job needs doing and there's nobody else to do it, I'll, I'll have a go at it anyway. And, and, and including... That's, that's, that's how it's always been. And I say, including, dear listener, chatting to us live yeah, when there's uh, a match yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, with how things have been in the background, because, well, you tell us the news. What's happened this week? Um, well, I say it's happened this week. It's, it's been going on. Things like this don't just happen overnight. It's been going on for about a few months now. Um... Neil Mel, who's uh, he's a he's a local businessman. Uh, he, I mean, anybody who knows Tividale and the Tividale area knows there's a riding school, there's a golf course. At, a lot of people know Dudley Golf Course, and behind the Dudley Golf Course or beside Dudley Golf Course, there's a a riding school. It's called Warren's Hall. And uh, oh, I'm not quite sure now. Obviously, I think it's been about three years now, um, but. When you speak to Neil, he'll tell you more. Well, Neil brought it out, took it over, and completely transformed it. Right? Uh, yeah. And he's brought a lot of business to it. He's brought his uh, his, his business, his uh, security business. GMS is now based there as well. And he he, he was Kiddy Harriers for uh, for three years. Mm-hmm. And I thought. Oh, before Christmas, I think it was about October, November last year, um, our chairman, who's another Neil, Neil Arnold, he came on doing it. He must have spoken to Neil and they've had a chat. And Neil said he was interested in uh, coming and joining and coming and see what he could do for what was his local football club. Yeah. You know, we don't remember Neil is born. He was born in the area. He still lives in the area, right? But, uh, and that's really where it started. Um, he was still at Kitty Minister, at Kitty Arias. And I think the situation was at Kitty that he felt it, it took, he'd gone as far as he could with Kitty. And he just wanted another challenge. Right. And fortunately, we was on his doorstep. <laughs> 
You're listening to Black Country Radio. So what does this mean then? What What is he coming in to do? And what are the plans? Right. Really, what it is, what Neil is coming in to do, he's coming in to bring in, right, his, um, his knowledge of local businesses, yeah. right, his knowledge of sponsorship, his, not, his really commercial ideas, and he's coming to bring them to help us along. I mean, what it doesn't mean that we're all of a sudden we're going to be throwing money about or whatever, but what he wants to do is help us to be self-finance and sustainable football club. Right. Because in the long run, what we all want is that in 20 years, 30, 40, 50 years' time, Tudor Football Club is still going. Right. And that's where it's at at the moment. Where before, up to when Neil came along, it was a case of literally hand to mouth, right? You know, we was yes. worrying about, we, we, we say we was worried, we was concerned about where our next pound is coming from. We never really had, you know, we, we, we couldn't, we ne- never had the, the knowledge of getting into the local businesses and bringing them on board and whatever. And we never really had anybody who sort of was, you know, knowledge-wise in doing what Neil's doing. Right. So he's bringing his nafs and his knowledge and his, his attitude yes. with the business yes. to Tividale. Uh, to Tividale. And he's also bringing, obviously, he's... A lot of the some of the folks who was with him at uh, Kiddy are more so coming on board. Ah. And, you know, you know, so it's sort of, you know, I wouldn't call it, you know, wouldn't go as far as to say them big hitters, but they know what they're talking about and they know, they know, you know, they've done it to the higher level than Tindall Football Club. I can I can tell in your voice that you you sound excited by this for the club. Oh, I'm very I am very excited. As I said in the um, a statement when Neil came along, you know, this is my local club, right? We punched above our weight for years and years now, right? I mean, we we, we went into the uh, we, we we went to the Evo Stick Northern Premier where we had no rights yeah. as a, as besides of us to be in there. But you know, okay, we've been fortunate with great managers over the years. And great players who've come and played for us and moved. Obviously, a lot of them have moved on to better things and whatever. But you know, they love to do. For some unknown reason, we make them all help. We make them all happy. We're making them all welcome, and they love to football club. And you know, we still have a hell of a lot of ex-managers, ex-players come down to us. I can you understand know, that. You know, yeah, they're never I, strangers. I can understand why. Always be <clears throat> made to feel welcome down That's at it. the beaches. So is this? Oh, just tell me, the, the, you know, on the checklist here, does that mean? Does this mean there's a load of money coming into the club suddenly? It doesn't mean that, does it? Pardon? It doesn't mean that there's a load of money coming into the club no, suddenly. No, 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 no. The idea really is to make is to make is to help to make us, you know, uh, sustainable as ourselves. The, you know, this doesn't mean that there's going to be. Thousands been pumped into it and whatever. Don't get me wrong. You know, again with the with the sponsorship that Neil is bringing along and the people with him, right? It doesn't mean that you know, come the end of the season, I've got I've got to be concerned. I've got to be concerned about you know finding money to um, regenerate the pitch or get yes. the goals sorted or whatever. So but, um, yeah. You know, it, we haven't got to worry about you know raising cash like we like we did before. We've still got to sort it, still got to raise it, but it's not sort of we're not knocking on death's door. You know, wondering where the next penny's coming from. So not only is Neil coming in, as you say, he's bringing people with knowledge and and background yeah. for this sort of thing into the club. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we mentioned your title earlier on. Does he bear a title for what he's coming in as? Yes, he's coming as joint chairman. Right. He will be. He will be joint chairman. What it is, like I said before, uh, uh, he will. Right. He will be t- taking over. He will be taking over the football side of it. What I'm saying is that I will be sort of having. He will be sort of doing. Well, he will be running the football side right. of the business. But what you've got to remember also is not only is are we going to have the first team, youth team, we. Be joining up with um, 
with our local school, right? And yes. we're going to start an academy for right. uh, 16 year olds. So, and the kids teams as well. Um, we've, we've, we have now got from under sevens up to under 14s as kids teams. So the idea really is a natural progression through from under seven to the first team. And earlier, as I spoke to you before we came on air, yes. we're running, a team, we're running um, a mid, what we call TV kickers. Where and I'm glad you mentioned this. Thank you. Please tell us more. I love this. Yeah. Well, the, the idea really is what we decided we were going to do is, you know, um, last season we had under nines, uh, under nines to under thirteens. I think we had about four or five teams. And what we decided to do, we, we said that what we want to do, we want to the, our local league, the Starbridge League. They started under sevens, and what we wanted to do, we wanted to start of under sevens, right, and then yeah. move up the leagues. So now we've got enough players to enter under sevens and under eights. The idea now is. You know, if you start with these uh, TV kickers are under fours, uh, from four-year-olds upwards, the idea is that is the four-year-olds and five-year-olds become next season's six, sevens and eight-year-olds, and then we just carry on with that. I love this idea. Yes, dear listener, as we've had this uh, we're speaking, you're coming out with the little ones, they're kicking it around and getting involved oh, yeah. with the club. That's a yeah. smash it. I mean, it's really successful. I mean, we're having 30 kids now on a Friday night. It's just, it's, that has, I mean, and they absolutely love it. Yes. And the thing is, the good thing is that we've got about six or seven coaches and they love coaching them as well. All right. That's great. You're listening to Black Country Radio. That, I was just talking to a, a player from another club, not in the league that we uh, normally cover here at Black Country Radio, uh, but they're talking to him about things and he says, I'm, I'm back in training in a couple of weeks' time. Have you had a chance to sit? I mean, obviously, there's a lot to have been talked about and the planning involved. Is there a plan in place now for what kicks off and all, already started for the new season? Oh, yeah. I mean, already we've already, I think, our training, the first team in the youth team training starts in about a fortnight's time. Oh. Um, already, um, obviously, I mean, the manager's... Um, have been talking to their players. Yeah. Uh, it's not so much the youth team. Um, Dave King has been talking to last season's squad. Obviously, as in any club, you'll have players who will be who, who want to stop, players who want to leave, and at this time of the year, players who are going on holiday and whatever, and they're still undecided of what they want to do. Because obviously, then you know, then most of them, a lot of them, are talking to other clubs and whatever. But yeah. it, it, in the next couple of three weeks, you know, Dave should have some idea of who he needs, what what people, he, what players he needs to replace, etc. And then we'll have he'll be forming the squad um, through pre-season. What we do pre-season training. Yeah. So, so um, the, the, you've just touched on something there. Any change on the coaching staff and, and that sort of thing? Much change? Um, right. Um, okay. I might, I might get beat up for this, though. But no, I, I don't I, want you to do yeah. that. I don't <laughs> no, want no, to no. Do... I'm really excited about this. Is that we we next season? Well, at least for pre-season, they're going to kick off, start off with us. We're going to have two of our former coaches in the uh, good old days, um, Richard Upton, yes, right, and uh, Chris. Everybody knows as Billy Warwin, yes. uh, the goalkeeping coach. They. They're coming along to kick off uh, with the pre-season, help out with our pre-season. And, you know, I am really excited because these two lads were, were there at the beginning, yes. right, when we started, when we uh, when we was winning leagues and etc. And uh, as everybody will know, I mean, Richard went up to, uh, he was with Sporting Calcer up to the end of last season. Yes. And uh, Chris... He was a goalkeeping coach at, um, if, if he went with um, Ian Lung and Richard Caldwell when they was manager at us. Yes. And uh, he, the three of them went to Alva Church and you, everybody knows what great they've been doing at Alva yes, Church. I and I, have. And, uh, I think, obviously, as you go up the levels, you know, commitments become more intense. And I think they just, you know, they, they've decided they want to come along and help us. Uh, in pre-season and I'm you know I'm really excited 
that, they're great coaches, and I think they, it's a massive coup for Tivado that those two are coming on board. Again, that's, that's super news. Has it been said yet about what would make for a good season next season for Tivadale's first team? Um, nothing's changed. We expect, and I say we expect, and um, no doubt Dave King expects as well. He knows what the, the yardstick is just year on year on improvement. And, you know, last season was our first season, first full season in the MFL. And like I said, at the moment, at the beginning, turn of the year, we was looking at, you know, top five position. Yeah. Even looking at, you know, the steady eyes of possibly second. You know, obviously, we had lots of going on, unbelievable run and win loads of games. But it was our first season and we finished 11th. And as far as we're concerned and everybody agrees, that is the progress. So the idea really is to progress from there. I, I, that's super. And one of the things that comes out of this is we're not just talking about what's going to happen with the first team. You've listed all the other things that are going on at the club as well. And it's good just going to lift it all together isn't it it's going to lift it all together for everyone oh yes definitely i mean it's there's a buzz around the club at the moment obviously a lot of people you know people will think that all of a sudden we we on a windfall and this that the other because you know we've got to go we're to kitty areas and this and the other but you've got to remember you know there's a there's it's a million miles between kitty areas and tividale football club Right. I mean, you know, what they worked on and what we work on, there's going to be a mass difference. Yeah. So, you know, you know, I don't want people thinking that all of a sudden we'll be going to be, we're going to be working on that sort of level. Right. But yes, there is a, there's a lot, there's a real good vibe around the club at the moment. Well, I'm so pleased to hear that for everyone. And I'm just thinking about. Everyone getting prepared for the new season. Back in the day, I would probably have said something along the lines was, well, the, the linseed oil on my cricket bat hasn't dried yet and you're already getting ready for the new football season. Give us a chance. Yeah, and, just, and, and as I said before, it's just nice to have people who knows who knows what they're doing and knows the business. Yes. Right? And, uh, and they're on board. You know, and we and a lot of the worry that I used to have, and we as a club used to have, has been taken away now. And we can just and um, we can really look forward to next season. Well, I know I am anyway. Oh, that's really super. Look to next season. You're listening to Black Country Radio. Well, whilst we've got you on the line as well, because I know how welcoming that clubhouse is and, and everything there. What events you got coming up soon down at Tiverdale, down at the beaches? Oh. Events wise, oh crikey, we've got a lot. As I mean, I don't know, in the background, you can hear disco blaring out. Yes, the yes, great. The 90s um, do want at the moment, so everybody's dressed up. We've got we've got a load of um, A team, people from the A team, and yeah. we've, got, we've got Liverpool <laughs> fans with the old black curly hair. Oh, yeah. Sure I think they're getting mixed up between the 80s and the 90s. I, fair, I think there's a little bit of historical inaccuracy in there. I yeah, think you've picked that up, right. Leon. I think you've picked yeah, that I up. I think a lot of them are between the 80s, but, you know, it's a 90s <laughs> journey. They're happy with what they are. Oh. You know, like I said, I've got the A team. They've got some dodgy wrestlers. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. So, yeah. so what happens? Do you have things like for the European Cup final tomorrow night? The Champions League? Yes, well, we've got, we've got um, as you know, we have a load of, um, we, we always, we always have artists or whatever, and we've got, yeah. we've got a singer on tomorrow night, and and we'll have uh, definitely have the uh, the Champions League game on tomorrow night as well. Yeah, well, sorry, dear listeners, we're, we're saying this, we mean Saturday night, so when this goes out, yeah. it's during this, this evening. Well, oh, sorry. No, that's all right. No, it's for me. I'm. I, I, it's my yeah, job to explain yeah, that. You. Yes, it will, yes, it will be tonight. <laughs> and like I said, obviously, like everybody else, we'll be uh, celebrating the jubilee. Uh, yes, that's the, the next thing. Jubilee. Yeah, what's happening yeah, for well, the jubilee we've got, down there? Car boots, kids, things going on. We've got what's going on on the uh, Thursday and Friday. What's the best way to find out what's happening at the club then, Leon? Is it um, Facebook or? It's just normal social media, you know, you can, uh, follow our Twitter account, uh, Facebook and uh, our website. Excellent, excellent. Well, before you go, I've got to ask you, because it's a busy weekend football-wise, mm -hmm. and I know the interest and love we have for, for football, non-league football, especially at this level. 
But well, you mentioned about Liverpool, and I've got something else dear to my heart. I'm wondering how good a pundit you are. Who do you think will win the Champions League on Saturday night, and who will get promoted from the Championship into the Premier League on Sunday? Be careful what you say. Okay. <laughs> right. Again, there's two things there, right? Go on. My heart says, my heart says Liverpool. Yeah. Right. But my brain says Real Madrid. I mm. mean, you know, to knock out Chelsea, Man City on the way, right? You know, yes. And, and, and uh, right. Paris Saint Germain. There's some. It just feels like their their names on the cup. But I hope Liverpool. I hope Liverpool win. Obviously, you know, English team. Yeah. Yes. Um, for the champions, uh, for the championship uh, playoff final, I can't see no further than Nottingham Forest. You know no, how to uh, say that. You know how to say the right things, Leon. Exactly. Absolutely. Oh, right. and, I, and, I, and I'll put something else on it. I wish the West Brom had uh, appointed Steve Cooper. Yeah, yeah. I, I think right. there's a number of clubs have said that. I know because yeah. of what he's done, he's done a, a remarkable yeah, job. Absolutely brilliant job, and yeah. you know, he ain't just took a team. I mean, this is a team who's in the doldrums for about two or three years. Yeah. Forest. Absolutely and right. What he's done, that turnaround is just unbelievable. Yeah, well. We'll find out on Saturday and Sunday afternoon, or Saturday night, Sunday afternoon. But I'm so pleased, um, and I can tell, and I'll say to the dear listener, how you're obviously looking forward to the new season with uh, with Neil Mayle uh, coming in and, uh, work, as you say, working with the club to progress things. We do really wish you well. and looking forward to that new season whenever it starts. Yes, yeah, and we are. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you, Leon. Take care. Have a great night. And you, bye. You're listening to Black Country Radio.